Okay, I hope everyone can hear me. Uh, my name is Frans Schreuder. I'm from the Netherlands. I live in Groningen. I work for the KVI, it's a particle accelerator, but in my spare time I work on this nice open source project. It's called USB Big Pro. It's an open source USB Big Programmer. Um, Before I tell you what USB PIC PROC is, I should first explain what a PIC really is. Uh, PIC, you write it PIC, uh, is a microcontroller made by microchip. Uh, and a microcontroller is actually a small processor, but it is embedded in one chip together with some flash, uh, uh, some memory and some other functions like I.O. but can be, they can have serial ports, uh, a analog to dig digital converters and things like that. Um, well, where do you find those microcontrollers? You can find them, for example, in a remote control, which I have here, but you can find them in a telephone, but in almost every digital device, and some of them can be PICs. A uh, USB PIC Prog is, a, is an interface to write your embedded software, which needs to run on the, on the microprocessor, into the PIC device. And it consists of uh, three, compo three components. Uh, one is the hardware, which, uh, well, you see it here. This is the, the bottom side, but the top side, you see it here. Uh, well, it's actually this big. You probably can't see it from uh, behind. And I also still have my first one. Um, the hardware cons is, is also built around a big microcontroller, so it needs firmware. So that's also a component. And there is also a computer program to, to write your compiled program in the, into the microcontroller. Um, the key features of uh, USB PIC PROC, well, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't open source, but the, it is also open hardware. So the, the hardware design is uh, freely available and there's even a different uh, design which is easier to, to make by yourself. Because this one you will have to well, be a little bit uh, uh, practiced in uh, soldering. Um, well, as the name already implies, it uses USB. It's a compact uh, design, but the nice uh, thing is that it doesn't need any uh, external power uh, supply to, to operate. Uh, well, USB can, uh, as you know, power a lot of, uh, give a lot of power, like 100 milliamps by 5 volts, uh, and that's enough to to power the, the USB PIC PROC, but also the target processor that you want to program, and even some surrounding components. Um, the interface is cheap. Uh, well, I'll talk about that. And it supports uh, many devices. Uh, for example, the 10F devices, 12F, 16F, 18F. There's, well, I think over 100 devices now supported. So these are just series, uh, and a lot more are coming. And, uh, well, I'm really putting too much time in this, so I think uh, I can say it's actively uh, developed. There are three uh, developers now uh, actively busy with the project. Um, well, you can buy this uh, interface for, for 20, dollar, uh, 20 euros. But uh, you can make it, uh, you can build one yourself, you can add your own PCB and make one for, well, maybe well, less than 10 euros. Um, why would you use USB PIC Pro? Because there are uh, many other programmers available. For example, Microchip has uh, their own programmer, it's called ICD2. They have more, but this is a common one. It's not only a programmer, but also uh, an in-circuit debugger. But, well, as you can see, 
it's one hundred sixty dollars and well the firmware of it and the, even the hardware are not open source there are some open source tools available to communicate with it but I've not found them very stable there's also another cheap uh, alternative available which you can also make yourself it's called the JDM programmer this one is a serial programmer uh, and well does your laptop still have one well mine doesn't um, and for most of the serial ports you will need an external power supply you can well they say on their website that, that you can use it with with the power that your serial per port supplies but uh, some well on some ports it works and on some computers it won't and it is very slow so it's cheap but I wouldn't prefer this one uh, let's talk about uh, what the hardware looks like uh, it's a very simple design I wanted to keep it, uh, keep it as cheap as possible it's built around a PIC 18F2550 uh, this is a PIC microcontroller which uh, uh, has native uh, USB support so you just need to write firmware in order to communicate through USB there's no external chip needed or whatever uh, and what you see here there's a 5 volt to 12 volt pump uh, to program this PIC microcontroller you need a 12 volt uh, programming voltage uh, and there's uh, a pump with ju just a couple of diodes and some capacitors which is controlled by the main uh, controller to pump the 5 volt from the USB port up to 12 volt to for the programming voltage well besides that you see some status LEDs uh, two jumpers connected to those pins a programming header and you will need to connect the cable to the target device for those who are interested in it you probably can't read the text but this is the whole schematic you see the voltage pump here there this is the 5 volt and there are some diodes uh, and those two pins are toggled in order to create a higher voltage and some transistors to switch the to switch the, the programming voltage these are the status LEDs, a USB connector and the programming interface <coughs> really that's it uh, the hardware has been designed uh, using a, a keycard that's a, a fully open source uh, PCB uh, suite which is uh, well as you can see very rich, feature, rich featured you can design boards up to uh, 16 layers uh, and that it has a rich library and a very unuseful uh, function but nice for uh, for presentations like this it's a, it even has a 3D viewer um, the firmware of the USB PicProc is uh, based on the uh, microchip USB uh, framework um, this uh, is just a bundle of source code with some examples uh, to uh, which you can compile and you can write it into your uh, microcontroller and it will have some basic USB uh, functionality like bulk read and writes and you can just continue using that framework and uh, well make the own, your own uh, tasks in it there's one little problem with this one uh, it is an open source framework but I pre would have preferred to use a, a GPL uh, framework um, there are some of them uh, on the internet but I haven't managed to to get my code compatible with the, the GPL frameworks I will we'll work on that later um, it is also compiled with a microchip compiler which is a closed source compiler uh, and I'm working on porting the code to a small device C compiler which is a, a GCC based compiler so the main tasks of the firmware are to communicate with the, the PC application of course the, the PC application loads some, some st uh, 
uh, some data, compiled uh, firmware, and it just sends it in, in strings to the firmware, or to the hardware. Uh, but all the programming algorithms are uh, implemented in the firmware. So the, pin, the, the serial signals in order to program the target board are really implemented all in the firmware and the, hard, the, the PC software is kept very simple. This is because it is faster to implement it in a real-time mic microcontroller, faster than on a PC. A small task is to control the voltage pump of the, of the uh, controller. Uh, the PC software. The PC software is unlike the other PIC programmers uh, you find on the internet. Uh, really cross-platform, so it works on Linux, Mac OS X and uh, Windows. And this is, uh, well, thanks to the WX widgets uh, library and libUSB. Those two libraries are both uh, cross-platform. Um, of course, the, this software communicates with the USB PIC PROC uh, hardware, but also with the PIC DEM bootloader, which is a bootloader, which a piece of firmware which is loaded in the hardware, and you have to program that once, and w once it's in there, you can just upgrade the firmware through USB. Uh, and you can also, uh, USB PIC PROC can communicate with any device which has loaded the pick them bootloader. Um, well, a nice thing about uh, open source software is that you can see that, th that people actually use it because they start translating your software. The, the main language is English, but uh, well, actually the first translation I got was Arabic, surprisingly enough. But it has now been translated into Greek, Spanish, French, Dutch by myself, Punjabi even, I didn't even know the language, and uh, Portuguese. Um, I want to, uh, to thank some people. Uh, the main developer, is, that's me, so I want to, to give uh, some credits to myself as well. <laughs> um, somewhere over there, Right in the back is uh, Jan Paul Posma. He has written the bootloader implementation in the PC software, and but he has also made uh, the the application Macintosh uh, compatible. Uh, some two or three months ago, Francesco Montorsi, uh, someone from uh, Italy, joined uh, the, the club of developers, and uh, he did a lot of uh, GUI improvements, and he made. Uh, implementation, uh, the, the application multi-threaded. Uh, Francesco is also uh, working on WX widgets. Uh, I also want to thank the translators, Christian, Jim, Patrick, Hadi, Kanvalit, and Fabio. And I couldn't have done the project without PicLab. So I want to thank Nicolas and also Kikat is very important. So I want to thank Jean Pepe. Jean-Pierre for this nice project. Uh, and, well, also important, the coffee uh, has been provided by Arno van der Vecht when I was developing uh, lately. So, do you have any questions? I still have two minutes. Yes? Could you talk a bit louder? I can't... I'm sorry, I really can't understand you. He's asking why don't you use an FTDI USB serial conversion? Okay. Um, well, I could have done that. Um, uh, actually, that was my first plan. Um, but uh, the, the, pro the, the problem is that uh, s uh, serial ports are rather slow to control the, the, the lines if you want to... Uh, if you really want to make a direct programmer like that, or do you mean that you want to communicate with the FTDI chip to a PIC in order to program? 
Uh, well, why would you? Because the pick that I used already has USB. Okay, well, yes, I could have implemented uh, uh, an, something like that, but I just didn't. <laughs> well, we can discuss that later, maybe. It's, it's a long uh, story. Anyone else? Yes? Um, well, the, the, the released version is uh, very unstable, but there are some snapshots and they're getting better all the time. But it's pretty poor still. Sorry? Yeah, that's why I'm not using it yet. <laughs> Thank you.